Hello, everyone, for the great solemnity of uh, Pentecost, the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the church. I, what I want to do before Mass begins <clears throat> is go through some of our local uh, protocols, particularly with regards to the reception of the Holy Eucharist. And uh, I know this doesn't directly participating by way of viewing, but I think it's still important that you know how communion will be distributed here at Corpus Christi. First of all, uh, I guess back up a little bit and welcome everybody who's able to be here today and welcome everybody who is uh, participating by way of viewing. Hopefully one day we can all be back. Um, one day we will be able to be back. It's just a matter of when, it's not a matter of if. <clears throat> so um, just so everybody knows, <clears throat> everyone who came into the church came in by way of the 48th Avenue side and then came down the center aisle and you will return, you will leave the church down the center aisle from the back starting first and go out the Waverly side and that way um, all physical distancing will be respected. Uh, there will be no offertory collection, <clears throat> offertory, and no collection per se, I mean there will be an opportunity for you to uh, give your sacrificial offerings and you probably saw the plastic container in the vestibule as you came in never have a collection. <laughs> this couldn't happen in a Catholic church. Uh, but it is at the back. <clears throat> there will be no ushers going down the aisle because it would uh, compromise physical distancing. And there will be no offertory procession of the gifts until further notice. Uh, it would involve uh, the touching of the vessels and so on. With regards to Holy Communion, <clears throat> from the back and uh, from the uh, and go go to the front. People will line up in the center aisle. You see the red tape on the floor. Uh, it is, it respects the physical distancing. <clears throat> and those who will be receiving communion on the hand will be first. And Deacon Richard will be over uh, by the, there's a line, a frog tape on the altar rail. That's where you will line up. And my uh, lineup will be here, one person at a time. So you'll, in, in the line, one person comes over, receives communion, one person comes over and receives communion, and then by the side aisles. <clears throat> um, please do not uh, the, uh, the place where you kneel, uh, but uh, you know, stand outside if you're going to receive on the hand or on the tongue, but those who will be receiving on the tongue wait till last. Okay, um, obviously no one, you know, everyone needs to be cognizant of physical distancing at all times. Uh, the person, when they come up, you can see that there, we can't see it now, but you will see there's red tape on the, on the ground. Uh, I or deacon will ha hold up the body of Christ, the body of Christ, and you will say quietly, Amen. And then you will come forward and, you know, uh, place your uh, hand to receive on the hand. Just make sure your hands are flat, okay? Sometimes people, they're not thinking, they're on the side, they're kind of cupped a bit, flat. So we can actually put the, uh, you know, set the edge of the Eucharist on your hand and kind of let it fall. If you're receiving on the tongue, obviously, you would simply uh, come up last and you would receive on the tongue as such. But again, I mean, it's, I'll say to you what I say to the children, it's the one time you can stick out your tongue. So be conscious of sticking out your tongue because sometimes what happens is people tilt their head back and like, so, no, you need to forgive me. All right, you need to. all right, there's nothing, it's, that is the reverent way of receiving Holy Communion on the tongue. So, and you have the right, so don't feel like, you know, you shouldn't do it if that's what you wish to do, but do it last. Uh, all should be standing. Please do not kneel or touch the altar rail. It will most likely be sanitized anyways, because, you know, I am there and I could be, um, you know, uh, droplets could be coming out of my mouth. I don't have COVID, but just so you know. And um, for all of you who might be wondering how I'm going to be... Um, what I'm going to be wearing when I uh, distribute communion is the mask. I'll wear the garb. Deacon Richard, he's a young guy. He doesn't have to do that. Uh, so that's what I will do. But he will have a mask on. Okay. So we'll have, I'll have a mask and a guard on. So as I wear those for confession. 
If um, we do touch your hands or touch your tongue, we'll stop immediately. Go to our table, we have disinfectant there. We'll stop, put the saboria down, disinfect our fingers, wipe them with tissue, and we have a, a special um, garbage bin with a, you know, a, a bag, and that'll be taken up after uh, the masses and, and disposed. And then we'll resume Holy Communion. So it's good sanitizer, um, and that'll disinfect our hands. So if that occurs, that's what will happen. Please put your hands up if you understand my instructions. Put your hands up if you understand my instructions. Thank you. Please put your hands up if you do not understand my instructions. Now we're helping everybody. This is a lot of work. It's for everybody. Everybody is for everybody here. You know, so, and we'll do this as long as we need to do it. That's just the way it is. The washrooms will be uh, opened only for emergencies. Ask uh, David, David and or Connie, uh, they have the key to the washroom. Uh, parishioners, really, um, this sounds a bit draconian, but please understand where it comes from. You're not permitted to mill around after Mass. Uh, even, you know, do Thanksgiving here in the church because the cleaners have to sanitize the pews, so please do your Thanksgiving on the way home. That's a really important part of after receiving communion, but, you know, we have to sanitize the church not so much for today, but next week, God willing, we'll have a full slate of masses, so the cleaners have to come in and do their for the noon, the noon mass, and the eight o'clock people will have prepared it for us. So please just after mass, um, you know, get, rise and, and walk out of the church. Uh, from the side like weekday mass and exiting like weekday mass. We'll figure out later if there's a possibility of us going and saying hello to people because it would be nice, but we have to keep physical distancing, and we don't want to do anything that would cause others to kind of break it, you know, because it's good to see you, and, well, you may think it's good to see us. This may happen naturally, and we, we want to uh, keep everybody healthy and respect the guidelines and the norms. Please wait for another confirmation. This is the last thing before Mass begins. Please wait for another confirmation call from the parish office next week as there are others who are lined up for the 5 p.m. or the 8 or the uh, 10, 10 a.m. who were not able to come today because of the 50 limitation. Um, so because you are here today for the 10 doesn't necessarily mean you're able to come next week for the 10. If it's possible, great, but if it's not, um, then you would not. You'll, you'll find out uh, as there will be a call from the office. Oh, yes, um, singing. Uh, please don't. <laughs> the only reason is because the, the medicine is out, the doctors, you know, they know that the droplets come out five or ten times more when we sing. Um, so uh, please do not do that. Um, uh, I, I, and I will probably sing a part of the preface, but I will start saying it, then I may break into the chant. But then the holy, holy, all the parts I will say so that you don't wind up singing and then, you know, the droplets are coming on the pews and so on. So the doctors say and we need to respect that. So that part's tough, but uh, just ask everybody to um, offer this up to our Lord. Uh, to sing is to pray twice, but we have to do it in our hearts for a while. Guidelines may be relaxed a bit. Hopefully we can sing out loud. So the deacon and I will begin with two verses of uh, the Holy Ghost, just so you know.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this joyous occasion, when some of us are able to return to the physical presence here at Mass, and of course many people are also continuing to join us uh, in a streamed way, spiritually united to us, but we're all spiritually united in the Holy Spirit to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's an opportunity for us to give thanks to the Lord for these relaxations that have occurred, an opportunity for us to also continue being very vigilant so that we don't have to go back into self-quarantine in this fashion. But also, of course, to give thanks to the Lord for the gift of the Church, uh, which all of you uh, are, are joyful to belong to and hunger to return to in this physical sense. So to give thanks to Him and to give thanks to Our Lady on this day of the visitation, which uh, the feast day gets bumped for the Holy Spirit, but I don't think Our Lady minds. Uh, but it was because of her complete and utter and total yes to the will of God that she was conceived in her womb and coming forth, dying on the cross and giving us the gift of the church. So coming into the Lord's presence with great joy and thanksgiving on this day when we celebrate her birth, my brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and brothers and sisters, to pray for me and to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church and every people and nation. Pour up, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their own language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord, send send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. O Lord, how manifold are your works. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my meditation be pleasing to him. For I rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free and all were made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessing. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus. With all the, the live streaming of Mass that's been going on, especially now that we have some people gathered here together at Mass, I was thinking, what if it was for the first Pentecost live stream 2,000 years ago? What if 2,000 years ago we could actually live stream the first Pentecost? What would that have been like? So we have the Apostles and Mary gathered together in the upper room. Peter's running the meeting. You'd say something like, you know, here we are together. It's been nine days since Jesus ascended into heaven. Just waiting around, seeing what's going to happen. And Peter would reflect upon, you know, it was 50 days ago that we had this meeting. We were gathered together. And then Jesus, he crashed our meeting. And all of a sudden, he just showed up. And he said, peace be with you. And he gave us this power to forgive sins. Peter might say, you know, well, Zoom has updated its privacy policy now. It's got these security measures, so most likely no one will crash our meeting. And then they're just kind of sitting in silence, and then all of a sudden, you know, they hear these loud noises, the rush of wind, tongues of fire, and scream. And the Holy Spirit, he has Zoom bombed their meeting. Pentecost has happened. And they begin to speak in all these different languages. And then the apostles go out and they evangelize the entire world. Now just as the Holy Spirit, at the first Pentecost, 2,000 years ago, he gave the apostles exactly what they needed. So too today, it's the same Holy Spirit is among us. And he wants to give us exactly what we need. So 2,000 years ago, the Holy Spirit, he gave the apostles exactly what they needed at that time. Today it's true as well. The Holy Spirit wants to give us exactly what we need. And when I look at today's readings, and I reflect upon the situation that we're living in, when I think about what do we need more of today, one word stands out above the rest. That word is peace. With this COVID-19 pandemic, there's a lot of agitation and anxiety that we face. A lot of worry, distress. And when I think about this word peace, it's a very powerful word for me, and I'm sure it is for you as well. Just as Jesus, in today's Gospel, he entered into the fears that the Apostles had, and he spoke to them twice, multiple times, about peace be with you, Jesus wants to speak these words to us as well. Jesus wants to speak words of peace to us today. Upon how can we have more of God's peace now? And there's many ways that we can approach this. One way that I've personally experienced 
a way to increase my peace in my daily life is by praying with Scripture. Praying with Scripture, I've found, is a consistent source of peace in my life. And I've put together just an easy way of praying with Scripture using the acronym RAP, RAP. So RAP stands for Receive, Apply, Pray. So I'm going to teach you how to rap with the Bible. This is for you, CN, especially. We're going to rap with the Bible today. So we'll go over these steps together. So the first step of praying with Scripture is to receive. You open up the Bible, you read a passage of Scripture, and you get to receive God's Word for you. God is speaking to you, and when you read the Bible, you actually receive His special words for you. Now practically, what this looks like, it could be a specific word or phrase that stands out. It could strike your mind or move in your heart. And that's what God wants to speak to you, and you get to receive His Word. And the second step of praying with Scripture is to apply. So once we receive what God wants to give us, we get to apply it to our lives. God wants to speak to our lives. Uh, practically, this can come about by you know, asking questions and then thinking about it. How does this word that I've received apply to my life today? To how I feel emotionally? Or to my job? Or to schoolwork? Or to certain relationships I have? How does this word apply to that? Now the third step of praying with Scripture is to pray. So once we've received God's word, we've applied it to our lives, to our daily lives, now we get to pray to Jesus. We get to have a real, try our best to have a real conversation with him, a real heart-to-heart -heart dialogue. I like to picture Jesus sitting across from me with the Bible open to the same passage, and Jesus is eager to listen to me. He desires to listen to me and enter into a conversation with me about whatever is moving in my heart. So these are the three steps that I've found helpful in praying with Scripture. Wrap, receive, apply, pray. So I've taught CN how to wrap with the Bible, so this is good. Now when I think about praying with Scripture, how it's brought more peace into my life, I actually think about two months ago, when I moved back home from seminary due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and after dinner one night, my dad was saying that he heard on the news with how the coronavirus, it often just attacks people in the night. So you feel fine during the day, and then in the middle of the night, it might attack. And that night, I actually woke up in the middle of the night sweating and I thought, oh no, I've got the coronavirus. And I, I couldn't go back to bed. And it was like 4 a.m. and I went to my family's living room. We had set up a prayer space. And I actually opened up today's uh, gospel. Now, I read the first verse of today's gospel. I'll read it to you again. Evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week. And the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. So first I received this phrase, Peace be with you, as if Jesus knew my fears and he was speaking directly to my heart about what I was afraid of. And I applied it to my life. I thought about, okay, if I've got this coronavirus, like, life what's going to happen and I started thinking about all of this and then the third step I prayed I spoke to Jesus about my fears I tried to have this conversation with him and I could really sense that at 4 a.m. in my parents living room Jesus was with me in that moment desiring to listen to me and then this real sense that he wanted to give me his peace in this moment and after this time of prayer, I had this deep sense of God's peace, and it stayed with me throughout the remainder of the day. 
And over the last two months, reflecting upon this time, there's been a lot of situations in which I've struggled to keep peace. But when I think about the ways that I've been able to recover more peace in my life, every single time I pray with Scripture, I leave that time of praying with Scripture with more peace. It's like a, a guarantee. Every time I pray with Scripture, I leave that time and I always say, that was worth it. And I have a deeper sense of peace in my life. Just if we were to open up the gospel, today's gospel, and read the words that Jesus has for us, peace be with you, that can be a game changer in our lives. That can just again, Jesus desires to give us his peace. Now, if this might seem difficult to understand in a church setting or just to hear once about how to pray with the Bible using this rap method, I'd like to journey together with you. We can do this together. So tonight, we'll try it out on Corpus Christi's Facebook Live page. We'll actually pray with today's gospel using this method. So you're more than welcome to join at that point. And we'll also put some videos out on our YouTube page in which we'll go over this method of praying with Scripture. So hopefully we can journey together as a community and learn how to pray with Scripture and learn how to recover and get a, a deeper sense of peace in our life. Those who are fortunate enough to actually gather here together at Mass, those who are ready to receive our Lord in Holy Communion. The words that we read, the words we read in Scripture, becomes a living reality for us in Holy Communion. It's like from going from reading the menu to actually eating the meal. And many of you have been waiting for over 70 days to be able to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. But he has been waiting, counting down all of these days to give himself to you in Holy Communion. For the church, that we may faithfully confess Jesus as Lord and be guided by the Holy Spirit to continue the mission of Christ in our time, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, our bishops and priests, may they constantly provide the faithful with inspiring leadership. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of healing, that God will touch all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, 
to strengthen their minds, bodies, and spirits, and restore them to wholeness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a fuller utilization of the gifts of the Spirit, that God will help us recognize and put into practice all the gifts which we have been given, so that the body of Christ may be strong in serving the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the spirit of life, that God will be merciful and give eternal life to all who have died, especially those of our parish and for all living parishioners for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please join us in saying the prayer for vocations. O oh God, you, you have chosen the apostles to make disciples of all nations, and by baptism and confirmation have called all of us to build up your holy church. We earnestly implore you to choose from among us the pure children, many priests, naked brothers and sisters, who will love you with their whole heart, and will gladly spend their entire lives to make you known and loved by all. Amen. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God.
accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant the peace to guard your men and governors throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those devoted to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admittance we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the energy of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as Give us the bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin. This is the communion antiphon and the spiritual communion. For those who are participating online, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the marvels of God. Hallelujah. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually to my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I wish, my Lord, to 
receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints. I think you should lead everyone out of the, uh, um, to make sure that everyone begins from the back, okay?
Yeah. 